At this point, Gemini on mobile has been out for a little bit under two months now, and since then, Google has already made a ton of changes to the platform. In the month of March alone, we got a handful of new features, major news about Gemini Nano coming to the Pixel 8, and it seems Apple of all people might be interested in Gemini for their own services, which is interesting to say the least. As someone that's been using Gemini a lot lately, I think some of these stories are pretty important, so without wasting any more time, let's get into the major updates for the month of March. Of course, I just have to say, if you love all things Android, consider subscribing to the 9to5Google YouTube channel. Here we eat, sleep, and breathe Google News, so if you wanna stay in the know, this is the best place to do so. Now, let's talk about the most exciting news for me, which is the rollout of Gemini for Google Messages. Originally announced in February, it's currently in beta for select devices like the Pixel 6 and later, Pixel Fold, and Samsung devices like the S22 series. Over the past few days, I've been using it on my Pixel Fold and I do have some initial impressions to share. The experience here is a bit different from the mobile app. To access, you have to start a new messaging thread with Gemini and when interacting with the AI chatbot, prompts will be sent and received over RCS. This does lead to slightly slower response times, but on the bright side, the contents are optimized for mobile, focusing on simplicity and avoiding overly complex responses or visuals. Much like the web version, you can upload images, generate images, and use extensions like Gmail, Maps, Google Drive, and YouTube. One more interesting thing is you can use the conversation widget to give you quick access if need be. Personally, I do like that it's one continuous thread, unlike the Gemini app that starts a new conversation every time you use the shortcut. Otherwise, I'm not sure how often I'm gonna use this over the dedicated app. I'm gonna try and use it as much as possible over the next few weeks to get an idea. Either way, I'm happy to see Google is trying with new implementations of Gemini on mobile and we'll just have to wait and see how it goes. Adding to the list of new features, Google Keep is getting a new AI powered upgrade with the implementation of the help me create a list feature via Google Workspace Labs. Overall, the integration is pretty straightforward. Once available, you'll see the signature Gemini gradient button when opening a note. From there, tap on the icon and enter the type of list you need where Google will suggest relevant items to add. I've used this a handful of times to create a list of ingredients for dinner or make a list of items I need to film for an upcoming video, Google does provide examples like a camping packing list, Halloween movie suggestions, or a spring cleaning checklist. In my experience, I think it works well. Great for quickly brainstorming ideas and practical to have in the app itself, but I do wish I could initiate the list in the regular Gemini app and then have it sent over to Google Keep as maybe an extension, perhaps. If you're a tablet user, then we do have some good news as recent updates to the Google Search app version 15.12 hint at Gemini integration for tablets. The update includes a few strings of text acknowledging the existence of a tablet version. The most notable one is quote unquote, Gemini handles tasks on your tablet. To my surprise, one of our teammates was able to activate the tablet version of Gemini and was able to pull some screenshots. As you can see, it's pretty much identical to the Pixel Fold version with two column panels when needed and a full canvas page for certain screens. The most surprising thing here is Google Assistant remained accessible even when Gemini was activated, which is not the case for the current mobile version. Using the hey, you know who keyword while docked summons Google Assistant, likely because of its improved smart home commands. Realistically, this is the way to go, especially as Gemini is not quite there yet as a Google Assistant replacement and is a great compromise for those wanting to test out both without disrupting their smart home setup. One of the biggest Gemini stories is Apple's potential talks with Google to license the AI model for integration with iPhones or other Apple products. According to a Bloomberg report, Apple has their own models for on-device features potentially coming in iOS 18, but are looking for a partnership regarding cloud-based services like image generation or writing essays based on prompts. Right now, Samsung is the most well-known example of using Gemini to power their AI features for note summarization, voice recording and transcription, image editing, and messaging features like Magic Compose. Details are sparse at the moment, so I won't speculate too much, but this situation tells us a lot about how difficult it is to build a large-scale model, especially if Apple and Samsung are willing to outsource to Gemini.
Another story that's pretty huge right now, Google has announced that Gemini will indeed make its way to the standard Pixel 8. This comes after the initial claim that hardware limitations would prevent it in early March, but since then, it seems like Google has been able to make it work. It seems like the concern was making sure the Pixel 8 still ran smoothly as the 8 gigs of RAM might not have been enough, although the base S24 also has 8 gigs of RAM and can run the model just fine. Regardless, it's on the way as it will be coming in the next feature drop which could be sometime in June. This is definitely a positive step for both consumers and Google while also reassuring a lot of Pixel 8 owners that their devices will be well supported in the future. Speaking of supporting devices in the future, we also got some unexpected news that Circle to Search is finally expanding to older smartphones. This includes the Pixel 6, 6 Pro, 6A, and 7A, along with select devices like the Samsung Galaxy S23 series, Z Fold 5, Z Flip 5, and the Galaxy Tab S9 series. While not immediately available, the Pixel Fold and Pixel Tablet are expected to get Circle to Search as well, which, as someone that uses the Pixel Fold quite often, it's about time. I don't want to rant about it too much, but Google's most expensive smartphone should have definitely gotten this a long time ago. Our last two stories are more on the minor side, one being a new tweak to the web version of Gemini that allows for more precise control of responses. Made available in early March, Google added the ability to select a specific string of text and use a new pen icon to regenerate, shorten, or lengthen that particular section. This change will help users edit certain aspects of the response instead of the previous all or nothing approach. And finally, for users looking to replace Google Assistant with Gemini, location-based prompts will now automatically launch Google Maps. So that means commands like take me to the closest grocery store or navigate to the park will show you a quick summary of the time and distance, then immediately open map navigation. It's still a bit slower than Google Assistant, but a welcomed addition, especially for those wanting a more hands-free experience. And guys, I know that was a lot, but I hope this video helped you get up to speed on everything new for Gemini in the month of March. As I said in my last update video, there is so much news in one single month, I thought it'd be a good idea to compile them all into one easy to digest video. So if this did help, leave a comment so I know you guys are getting some value. With that said, how are you feeling about the Gemini updates? And if you're a daily user like I am, what are your favorite use cases? I'm sure myself and the rest of the community would love to know, but in the meantime, I'm getting out of here. This has been Jordan Floyd with 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.